Um, I think it's probably good enough time for us to to kick off. Um, a few other people can jump on as we go through. Um, but firstly, thank you for all of you joining. I appreciate it. it's extremely busy times. There's never there's never not a busy time for an accountant. But obviously, um, as we are right now, um, with all sorts going on, yeah, genuinely appreciate. And hopefully, we can give you or we will give you um, some great insight um, for you know in terms of what we're doing as a business, but also. Uh, with a special guest, uh, Stuart Hurst, to go through and understand, well, from my perspective, what the hell TikTok is. <laughs> um, but yeah, the running order today, uh, we're going to have um, Dan Matthews, our very own Dan Matthews, is going to go through uh, the five reasons to implement now. Then we will move over to uh, myself and Stu, um, as I say, and we'll go through all things TikTok and whatever platforms the cool kids are using these days. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll finish with um, an exciting sneak peek on um, an update that we're going through with Advisor. Um, so I will hand over at this point uh, to Sam. I will, uh, sorry, to, to Dan. Um, I will shut up and uh, let him take the floor. Perfect. Thank you very much for that, Sam. Um, so I'm going to run through five reasons to implement the software now. Um, now, time is the biggest roadblock to accountants at the moment and probably always will be. However, time to act is invariably now. Uh, time is always going to be an issue for us. Um, if you don't think you have time right now, uh, is that really going to change next week, next month? Um, we're always going to have monthly deadlines. There's always going to be work for us to do. Um, so it's not going anywhere at all. But ultimately, uh, it's a matter of priorities, not time. Um, I guess it's cliche, but it's one that holds up. There are 24 hours in a day today, uh, and there's still going to be 24 hours in a day uh, six months from now. So where is this extra time going to come from? Uh, there are three reasons that you're looking to implement a new accounting tech solution. Um, it's either going to help your clients, uh, it's going to be saving you time, it's going to be making you money, um, or it's going to be all of the above. Now, if it's not doing any of those things, then you probably shouldn't be implementing it. Uh, but no matter which of those have brought you to that decision uh, in a new tool, um, it's definitely the sooner the better. Um, and this is especially because uh, there's a lag between software and adoption and profit. Now, whether we're talking about time and money, um, you always need to invest some initially before you start winning it back later on. Um, it also doesn't matter if you're implementing a new software solution, hardware, process change, workflow, staff member. The sooner you start, the sooner you profit, whether that be prof profiting in time or money. Now, early adoption allows you to hit that profit stage sooner. If you wait until you really need a solution before pulling the trigger, then you're waiting until the most critical moment to make that investment. Now, it's better to invest early and reap the rewards when you need them, especially in the software world. Jumping on the bandwagon early comes with its benefits. So prices are often um, lower the, while the product is being worked on uh, and improved, which means that initial investment is lower and that break even point is much sooner. Also, this profit gap can be decreased uh, by getting on the train early. Uh, and this is because the sooner you integrate tech into your workflows, the more seamless um, it's going to be. Now, ideally, tech solutions will, will be built on your processes from the ground up. But unless you're a brand new startup, that's not going to be possible. The longer you wait, the more established, older, less efficient processes are going to be. Uh, and clients don't like change. So, you know, working with businesses, um, even when it serves to benefit them greatly, they like to stay as they are, even if that means a state of organized chaos. Um, rip that plaster off, which they've currently got on. The longer you leave it, the more set in their ways they're going to be. Uh, and it, more it's going to be of, of an ordeal. Um, and don't ask clients either. Tell them that you found a better solution and it's going to better their business. You're the expert. Um, so as accountants, we need to be prescriptive to them. Um, colleagues as well. So working with colleagues, creatures um, of habits, uh, they are more susceptible uh, to getting stuck in ruts. How many times have we caught colleagues doing something manually that could be automated um, or bruising through a, a meaty spreadsheet rather than using the new cloud solution that you've got? Um, getting them uh, to adopt the new software solutions early um, so they don't feel left behind uh, and the leap isn't so big. However, not everyone in industry is adverse to change because your competitors, um, they are implementing now. It's a competitive market. Um, we're all out there. We're all playing the same game. Um, so to level that playing field, uh, we need to make sure that we've all got the same equipment. 
we can see that all the um, cloud accounting software is the future of this industry. Uh, and let's be honest, it's the present of the industry um, and it has been for quite a while now. The marketplace is evolving, adapting, survival of the fittest actually means survival of the most adaptable to change. Uh, this has been true. Uh, 2020 really cemented that critical need for cloud solutions in your workspace, um, in your workflows, and the people that thrived in 2020 were the ones who leveraged technology to aid their businesses. If you don't need any further proof, um, look at the early adopters of apps like Xero, Receipt Bank, or, or Dext as they are now today. Um, but every day, your competitors are implementing these solutions. And if you're not, um, you're falling behind, which is a problem uh, because your clients need these solutions. Um, it is a risky time for businesses at the moment. Your clients need you. As you will all know, there's a huge knowledge gap, knowledge gap uh, between what SMEs know about their finances and the risk that poor cash flow management poses to them. Now, this is another reason to be the leader. Your clients don't know what they don't know, and often they don't know what they need. Uh, forming good habits with accounting tech uh, like daily bookkeeping and thinking about cash flow on a regular basis uh, means that they're much more likely to work. The more you can get your clients doing things now, um, the much healthier their business will be and the much healthier those habits uh, are going to be as well. Um, and let's not forget as well, protecting our clients uh, means you know protecting your revenue as well. Um, and there's no need to feel overwhelmed with you know implementing software right now you don't need to jump in eyes closed into a pool in the deep end at all um, but if you do start today uh, you'll be one step closer uh, than you were yesterday um, but just taking everything step at, step at a time uh, and make sure you're working with your clients your colleagues and your app partners uh, to make it all happen cool thanks dan um does anybody have any questions um or anything they want to they want to um, challenge Dan on in that side, or I, I mean, we can we can run through questions now, or we can hold them off to the end. It's entirely up to you. Doesn't like we've got anything come through as yet. So, Stu, um, I would thank you very much for that, Dan. Um, Stu, before we do your introduction, I'm really keen actually um, to to get your thoughts um, on on this side, and you know. When it comes to the implementation of softwares, um, obviously from your experience at UHY, um, but also your experience at um, Accounts Illegal, was there any, did any of that resonate? Was there any areas that anything you would add to it or, or um, any other thoughts? Yeah, no, I'd say it's all, it's all spot on. Um, you know, as I often say, it's, it's that three, you've got to start, yeah, which is difficult. I would say we're, we're trying to do a roadmap now, 90 days, focus on one, maximum two, apps in terms of rollout. I have been guilty in the past of being, uh, I have been called a puppy that chases tennis balls sometimes on the app stack and being a bit crazy and, and doing everything, uh, not half-baked, but but not um, focusing all your resources on one thing at a time. So better to do one thing properly than, than four implementations not so hot. Uh, and yeah, expect the first three months things to get worse before they get better, 100%. Right? Time will go up, things will get difficult, people won't like it because no one likes change. Not even me if it doesn't suit my agenda. So um, you've you've got to stick at it for three months before you make any kind of judgment. Yeah, yeah. No, that's really good, really good to hear. And I think, yeah, th there is a you know we look at the zero ecosystem. Was it 800, 900 apps, something crazy like that? Now, you know, it, I understand there's a lot of shiny things around, um, but you know, it, it's I guess Dan mentioned there, and it's also you know as you say, Stu, just just pick those projects and and run with those projects. And yeah, you know. I, I like the bit that it will get worse, you know, and I think that's the that's the thing. Um, we all got to, you know, as soon as it does get bad, you go, well, actually, I'll just go back to spreadsheet or, you know, whatever. I'll still process manually, but it, yeah, you're right, you're right. So thank you for that, Stu. Um, I don't know whether I really need to introduce you, um, or do I now need to introduce you as, um, you know, sir? Is it, you know, what what title have you got now? We've been well, the zero MVP, uh, most valuable professional. Are they calling it? Is that right? Indeed. I've, I, well, every man and his dog probably knows at the moment about it. I don't sure about it. I think my family are sick to death of zero. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you the are you the messy of the accounting world? Is that, that what well? I prefer it? Ronaldo to be honest, but <laughs> that's that's another conversation. That's a controversial one, but yeah, and another conversation and debate that I guess we'll never we'll never find out who's real. But so, well, interesting. If there's a Ronaldo and a Messi, who's who's your um, arch enemy or uh, your, this, your closest? Uh, that's a good question. I. Uh, yeah, well, well, I, there, for sure. well, 
we'll have to work that one out won't we? <laughs> um, so well firstly Stu, you know, genuinely appreciate you joining us um you know again uh, we're lucky that he didn't charge us for this you know obviously with, with this new accolade but no just just on the the zero mbp thing i mean presumably this is a new award i've never seen this this one created before or or has it uh, yeah, before. no, there's been yeah, there's been an MVP. Yeah, there's been an MVP. I know uh, Cheryl from Pink Pigs won it a few years ago. That's one that sticks out. Oh, okay, okay. So, but it's not something that's run every year, is it? I don't think. Um, don't know. Yeah, well, in the awards has been a gap, haven't they? I guess in terms of years as well, with um, the moving of dates on zero on comps. So, so, did you did you have an idea this was going to happen? Did you? No, I, I mean, I knew six days before the event when zero had said that we just. Doing, funnily enough, a bit like this webinar about just asking about accounts and social media, that was the premise, and they filmed that 15 minutes, and then Gary Turner dived in and said, oh, you've won the award, so um, it did kill me for six days to have to keep that quiet, you don't, I'm not the best at keeping secrets at the best of times, so um, <laughs> that killed me, but before that, no, I had no idea, I didn't think I'd get anywhere near, to be honest, it's something I've always wanted to, you know, a, a zero award, if you like, and do it, but uh, there's so many amazing accounts out there, yeah, that yeah. I didn't um, think I'd get anywhere near. I just want to clarify, uh, we haven't got you on to tell you won an award with us, um, other than being on this on this, uh, this session. So, oh, you know, fun. yeah, you might be on. <laughs> we'll, we'll have to speak to your agent after this one. I can't say um, sending a bell now, sending a bell. <laughs> <laughs> Look, what, what you're doing with um, TikTok, um, which is the one that stands out more than anything at the minute, um, you know, I'm 39, 40 in July. Um, it's alien to me. You know, and I think about, you know, a, an average, you know, a typical accountant will probably be, you know, pra or practice owner or whatever will probably more likely be older than me. Um, so if I find it alien, what chance do, you know, what chance do they have, first of all, in adopting it? Or, you know, what made you, you know, move into that side of it and, and I guess take to social media rather than the typical Twitters and, and, and you know, whatever we would, Facebook we'd be using in, in the past. What made you choose and go that way? Yeah, that did it. Uh, well, for starters, I'm 39 and 40 in May, actually, which is a devastating blow. <laughs> so never too old, teacher, yeah. teaching all those new tricks. But um, it, it was so that, that I'd been doing videos anyway. I don't know, I, some people might remember, like I'd done a Matrix video and kind of like um, a Liam ne Neeson kind of a taking video on cloud accounting and, and a few like VAT updates and things like that. And they were all filmed with a proper camera, green screen, MacBook. Uh, subtitling but they would they would take a decent amount of time a couple of hours per shoot really to do um which was cool but you needed you needed to really block out time and especially moving to a council legal where I didn't have a marketing department behind me like it was really difficult to find the time to do that the thing that jumped out on TikTok it was actually my brother and his niece my nine-year-old niece they were doing TikToks and posting them on Facebook and while the dancing was rubbish, like she's never going to win Britain's Got Talent with the dancing abilities for sure. Like she's not got snake hips, not a chance. What was good was the video, the, the effects and the timings, the music and the cuts were really good. So when I asked Andrew, my brother, about it, I thought he was doing it and, and using something else. And he's like, no, Macy's just doing that on, on TikTok. And it was kind of like, if a nine-year-old can do that like so well, like th this could be a way for me to edit videos quite quickly and get things out there and be a bit more spontaneous with things. So that was the first draw. And then they had an, I've had an idea in my head for ages about, it was going to be for tax returns, about the build-up, waiting for tax returns. And I had the Deruda Sandstorm soundtrack. Yeah. I've always had that in my mind, about I was going to do that, this build-up, and then going manic for tax returns. And then... It, I obviously that would have to wait till January and then with Rishi's announcements I felt actually I could probably use it for that kind of thing with this build up listening to Rishi and then going crazy to that soundtrack so I did that was the first one I did on TikTok and then posted on LinkedIn and that got 45,000 views on LinkedIn and the profile kind of just went boom wow. and that, that was the point where I thought instead of just using it as a one-off that was like wow this is this is pretty cool this is this is a good way to edit videos quick um, and, and get out there so yeah, that's where that's where it all began, really, and then the rest has been kind of history, really. So most of them are daft, but there's some great educational pieces on there, and there's a few other bits and pieces I've got planned that are a little bit more serious, but again, I'll be driven by. Yeah, by and, that, and, and that was one of my questions. Um, do you, how how do you come up with these? You know, because we we thought about it internally, you know, and Hannah um, and and I had a discussion, and Helen were like, I think H Hannah's. Um, our CEO, her, I think it's her, and ah, Hannah's there now. Her nephew, um, I believe, is it that 
he didn't he do a something on TikTok and it went yeah. viral and you were like, we need to do something like this. Yes. We need to, and we were like, what do we do? How do we get out there? No How, original you know? thought. That's the issue, I think. Yeah. Uh, Stuart, do we get to see your TikTok? Uh, yeah, I'm sure we can work something out. <laughs> Ron, feverishly find it. I can send the it. link, yeah. <laughs> I can, I'm sure I can fish it out. Um, and I can put my dip this at accounts and legal if anyone's on TikTok, by the way. Um, yeah, so in terms of coming up with ideas, I mean, there, there is a mix. Like, so some of them are pinched. There's no doubt, like, all those videos are not my original thought. Often, living in the world of TikTok, they'll be, they'll be trending sounds or trending uh, pieces. So there's one, you know, where I'm... Oh, lockdown will be easy. I'm in my shooting time, and it's like 12 months later. I'm in my peak two ones, surrounded by little figures and stuff, and going a bit crazy. Someone else has done a similar idea, and obviously, I'm pinching that soundtrack, but putting my own take on it. And a lot of them are non accounting things, like about maybe complaints or other things. And it's like, oh, how can I twist that onto into the accounting arena, if you like, or make that about that kind of thing? Um, so, so some of them are pinched in that sense of, yeah, seeing someone do it to another industry, and I think I can, I can bring that in. Some of them are just soundtracks, like this trending stuff on TikTok, and you just think I could do some it. Isn't it Boney M. Rasputin is uh, getting a resurgence at the moment? My young ah, yes. Like, yeah, um, exactly. See, I am with, I'm with the kids, yeah. Sam. What are you saying? Yeah. Um, and yeah, so some people do, yeah, and then the app stack kind of thing. Some people, a lot of people on there will do good television programs to app, app watch, whereas I've obviously tweaked that to like good apps to use and then put in short clips and that kind of stuff. So, um, and then the last idea just literally comes from day to day. So I, on my, I would always recommend to anyone with any kind of social media content is I've got my iPhone. It's, got, it's just notes on my iPhone. And if something happens in the day, it can, be, it can be one sentence that someone says or something daft I've seen. And it's write it down at that point in time because you'll guarantee you'll forget about it later. So scroll it down. And then I've got, I've got a bank of them. Um, and, then, and then they're there. So I've got plenty more ideas. Lots of them I don't have the skills to do. Like the... My ultimate one is a right here, right now, fat boy slim, going through the ages of the dark age of accountancy in a, in a role through the running through to cloud. But can, you do the the full, um, can you do the full blinding lights dance routine, which is, I think uh, everybody, everybody wants to know that, you know? Yes, that is something uh, a shame that I have practiced a little bit, not going to lie. <laughs> well, do, do, how do you get the the confidence to do this because I know you asked me to do one months ago and, and I was like, yeah, yeah. And then I was like, I, I just, you know, I just clam up and I'm quite a confident person, but something like that, because you are exposing yourself to everyone, you know, not, not that I hope you're not. No, I mean, no, that's exactly. That's a separate, that's a separate channel. <laughs> yeah, that... Donating everybody who's right. attending today. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you're, you're, I'll rephrase that. So you're, you're putting yourself out there and, you know, your vulnerabilities, essentially. You yeah. Know, I, how do you, you know, how do you first get over that? Because that, that for me is the bit, and I think most people listening to this now will go, will say the same. Uh, you know, that would be the bit that really, it makes me anxious just thinking about it now, essentially. Yeah, it is. I mean, I guess I got used to being in front of the camera pre TikTok in terms of um, being a bit, I mean, I am a bit daft and a bit eccentric, I guess, compared to, you know, I am, but, it, but you don't have to be to be on whether it's TikTok or social media, like the, best advice is like be yourself really and there are other people that on LinkedIn Laura Taylor is my absolute like she's the one for me who started me off on the whole social media and I wouldn't say she's a brilliant at value added and technical stuff she 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 do the odd personal post but it's much more it's more straight laced and technical but it's really really good and that's I, I can get the sense of the type of person she is yeah. from that and that's what people buy into so yeah you are and I think certainly with the pandemic, showing yourself empathy, who you really are. You know, we've all had kids, dogs in the background, day-to-day -day life there. And I think that's probably broke a barrier down for, for some people, um, for sure. But it's one of them, I pinched up James Ashford lows, like version one is better than version none. So even if the first one isn't as perfect, like just get it out there and get get trying really. And yeah, you you do... Uh, you do break down the barriers. Like I was definitely more wooden when I started to where I am now, for sure. Yeah. And, you know, we've just had a comment then from Francesca and I have to say, I follow her on Instagram as well. And again, somebody who's just real, you know, um, just putting themselves out there, which showing vulnerabilities in some ways, but, um, you know, showing the human. And actually there is a person behind those numbers. And actually that's the, for me, that's what truly 
catches me you know if i was a small business wanting an accountant that's who i'd want i'd want somebody who there's a person behind it you know whether i want them dressing up in a pikachu costume that's well, another yeah. question this but you know, <laughs> you know rough the smooth and all that it's better um, than naked sam which is where you were going on the other <laughs> well that's very true that's very true and, and you know and, uh, you know we talk about um you know people coming in screen and stuff Hannah's been there herself, you know, with um, swearing at her husband, which if you haven't seen that, you can you can dial into our uh, Predict Plus demo and uh, Hannah will, uh, you'll see Hannah guiding through. But, you know, it's that point again, I think this last year we have all become human, you know, and, and showing our vulnerable side, which at first was scary, you know, and I guess what you just said from the TikTok piece, that is scary, you know, I'm scared of that, but I'm happy to do this. So why wouldn't I do that? You know, why is it, it's okay to be silly, you know, and I think that's the, yeah, and you don't have to be. You don't I have to. a question. Sorry, Sam. I always, I'm no, no, no. So I'm super yeah. interested. Like, how? What's the engagement been like? And has how have how's it benefited? What's been the yeah? Thing? So, so the the so there's a TikTok channel, and a lot of TikToks get posted on LinkedIn. And in all honesty, it's via a LinkedIn channel where more of the interest comes from in terms of the messages. But we have I have actually home work directly off TikTok too. So. The TikToks, I only have a few hundred people following. The views, you normally get maybe 2,000 on an all right one. The biggest, I've got 60 odd thousand, I think it was, on the actual TikTok itself. So the, the reach there, and there's, there's a mix of people, but I think the belief that TikTok was school kids dancing, which it probably was when it started, it's definitely changed. There's, there's some great educational pieces on there and some fantastic people to, to learn from. And I think it is becoming more of a, yeah, a, a a business place as well to be honest from the people that are on there and certainly the, the people that, that follow me and, and engage on that sense um for sure okay. and then it's yeah, the other the linkedin side of things where the messages come from and so i have four content blocks that i i mean i'm no marketing professional but my, the way i see it is i have humor is the is the first one and that's the one that definitely gets the most views and the most engagements the most likes and the most comments all the time every time all the time then our personal stuff. So, you know, I spoke about like my dad's situation with his health and other bits and pieces and what inspired me. Again, they strike a card really well, help for building empathy and, and who you really are and what and what you're doing. And then the other two are the social proof where I'll put client reviews on, or oh, we've done this, we've saved this tax for a client and we've done this and getting other people to vouch that you, you do actually know what you're doing. And then the value added and the technical stuff is the last piece of the puzzle, which is the this is the app stack. This is what you can do on zero. This is how you can save some tax. And they're always the lowest engagement, but they're the ones that drag someone to send a message often onto it. So the strategy is, the, yeah, the humor and the, the personal stuff is for people just to get to know me and know what's happening and, and the reach. And then it's for those that are interested, there's something that strikes a chord on their own pain point or something technically they want. And that's what, what brings them to a message. So there is, Although it's it look might look random for the outside, there is there is a content block and a strategy to to the way I'm posting. So um, yeah, and like I say, you know I can say it. You know it's measured. There's, there's 45 grand in the last three months that's come purely from LinkedIn and seven grand purely from TikTok. Uh -huh. Like with no other, no other, no one else. I've never met those people. I never will meet those people physically. That's purely only online. And then it supports, I think, networking really well as well. So I do a lot of, at the moment, that's virtual. But it's great you get in a networking group and a fantastic way is connect on LinkedIn, connect on TikTok, connect on Insta, and you're going to learn so much about me that in a month you're asking me about, like, they asked me about the flood at my house and all sorts. And I'm like, I've never told them about that specifically. But but they are invested in my life almost. And I just think that's great for a, for a networking tool as well, not just a, a purely is social there, media. Is there a fear that, um there's kind of some invasion of your personal space though or is that something that you're happy with because you know i guess there is it could go the other way couldn't it you know in, in terms of you know we're looking at the positives but is there any downsides yeah. of, of the yeah. way that you the, the probably is more from heather my other half <laughs> she gets dragged <laughs> into these things and she's like but we've got a trade-off now because she's running a dog walking business and i get roped into some things for that now so it's like well um but yeah it's not always nice like you know i am um I wouldn't say I'm, I'm never brutal towards that other account. Well, I am in terms of dinosaur accountants, I guess. I am quite brutal in terms of attacking dinosaur accounts. I've never attacked someone specifically on, on that side of things. And obviously, I'm not the biggest fan of um, a certain desktop piece of accounting software that gets gets battered every once in a while. There's no doubt, you know, the, the zero side of things and the QBO stuff is, is um, where I push. And that sometimes creates 
uh, yeah, trolling, I guess, some some nastiness. And I don't mind constructive criticism of people. Just like, no problem with people thinking other well, software is better or my advice is bad. You, you do get the odd like brutal message privately where you are getting called something not so nice, <laughs> um, which is never good. But it's the rough with the smooth in a sense that you know. For, I'd, I'd rather I'd rather take that five percent of nastiness for the ninety five percent of good that it does. And and the great thing is, I think I, I think part of the MVP award we and that was the fact that I was helping so many accountants. Like I get so many messages from accountants of like that's really good, this has inspired me, I'm going to look at this app, or I just, even I want to fight the dinosaurs, of like, I'm in this firm, can can you help me, that kind of thing, and I've even been doing that with other accountants to help, often, you know, more junior people, really, on like, right, this is this is my advice, I've been done it at UHY, and even my firm before, of, of break that mould and, and change things, so it's not just about winning work and money, for me, there's like a, I do quite like the idea of being inspiring to, to the, the next level, next generation of accountants as well. Love it. No, no, it's great. And, you know, thank you for being so honest. What, where do you sit? I mean, it seems like TikTok is the, is the place where you're creating the content and then it's essentially LinkedIn is the, the main platform, isn't it? Because yeah. Twitter's in my head, it's just noise. It's just frustrating. It's tr- full of trolls as well. Uh, Facebook, again, you know, this, people say if you use Facebook, you're old. And also if you use laughing, crying emojis, apparently um, you're old. So I'm old. apparently. Right. Um, but, you know, Thinking about the other platforms that are out there, you've obviously got Snapchat, which I just don't get. Um, but Clubhouse is a big one now, isn't it? You know, which is an invite only. Um, Carl, who would have kindly invited me to it. I've gone on it once and gone, I don't know what's happening. There's people talking, but I don't really know what's going on. And, you know, have you had um, success with Clubhouse? Is that working well? Is it something you'd recommend? Or uh, I've dabbled, is the honest answer. I found it better for for the, it to support the local networking events and people I know that are running smaller discussions so you can have more, yeah, quality discussions, I guess, with, with people that you have some connection with or at least some people in that room that are in the event. So for me, for Clubhouse has been good for, for on a northwest of England kind of basis as opposed to a, uh, some of the big um, speakers and national stuff, to be perfectly honest. Um yeah, so that's that's probably where I'd say that comes in. That's quite nice in the fact that like literally I'll be on Clubhouse. Six to eight PM is my best time for that while I'm cooking my gustos. Like and I've just there's a chat on and I'm just because sometimes with that I don't need to you don't need to talk. You can just you can just suck it up and, and listen kind of thing and, and learn. Um but yeah, I've probably not mastered certainly not used it to win work or master that at the moment, more of a more of a spectator to be honest. But I think whatever the platform is. Like, you know, yeah, LinkedIn works for me, but like Dale Hudson smashes Twitter and, and wins a lot of work from that. There's the Irish business advisors on Instagram. The, the posts aren't the most exciting in terms of pictures, but the advice they're giving, and I know the work they win from that and their average fees are amazing for that. So I do think that it, there are different types of people that sit on different types of, of platforms. And if you know your market and where they live and where they, they hang out, then, then I don't think any social media platform is out of the question. Um, and I'd always say, I, the other thing I'd say on it is, like, you can't expect to turn a tap on and it be instant straight away. Like, it's a good six months of building, following, building momentum, getting interest before anyone even drops your message. You might get the odd one, small one that pops in, but generally, before you get any kind of traction, you need you need kind of three, six months. A bit like the app stack, I guess. You need you need to put the effort in and do it. Yeah. No, no, it's interesting. And, and um, you know, how much time oh sorry the first one i'll ask is actually um what advice would you give to someone now who's looking to start about uh, start this and you know and where would you go first what would you you know is it planning what you would do the content or is it actually getting on the platform understanding it what what would you how would you attack it yeah so i mean yeah get have a look at the platforms if you're not sure on which one you want to want to post that have a look at the people that inspire you and what they're doing well what then you know what what it is what it is that appeals to you and I guess know who you're trying to who are you speaking to like who are you trying to appeal to so I mean sometimes I can be guilty sometimes of, of appealing too much to the accountants and the app providers as opposed to the business users if I'm honest on some of the posts that I do um so start start with knowing you want to have an idea of who you're trying to appeal to and what the goal is of of doing it and some of it I don't think it's I don't think it all should be oh, I'm going to do it because I want to earn a fee like I've learned from LinkedIn. I've learned so much from people on there, and you know, um, 
Will Will Farnell, for example, Matt Flanagan. Like, although I kind of know those people in bits and pieces, some of the posts on there and the other bits that they, they share are, are fantastic as well. So it's a great learning experience. Yeah, the main advice I've said, I think I said earlier, like, you know, be you. Like, whether that is daft or not so daft, like, or more more detail basis, like, don't don't put a face on. I think it's a lot harder for the big firms. If you're in a top 50 firm, I think it's a lot harder just because from my experience, you know, UHY, I loved working there. It was a great experience, but there's a, there's a corporate angle to what they do and they, and they serve some huge clients that are a very suit and tie, this is what we do. And at the same time, they have a cloud arena that's the kind of 10 million less owner managed business. That's a very different market. And I think it can be really difficult if you're, if you're there to, I would say you can't appeal. You can't appeal. The UHY cannot appeal one person to everyone that UHY service, for example. Mm-hmm. So you know, if I'm in the cloud department, I've got to appeal to those kind of people and not worry if it puts off other people in that business. There are other people that can that can do that kind of thing. So it can yeah. be it can be a tough balance on the for the big firms, um, and it's why it's, it can be great if you can get buy-in from a few of the teams and make a plan together. But if you are a bigger firm, you're it's. Yeah, there's not a contradiction, if you like, in, in what you're saying and, and what you're doing. Just a quick question, Stuart, just on a really practical note, because I'm sure people are thinking this. How long, how, how much time in a week are you spending on this? Yeah, content creation is not, like, people, not as much as people think, probably. Um, like, the TikToks, literally, most of them, with the exception of two, take uh, five to ten minutes tops, like, to film, like, literally. Yeah. There's some it helps if Heather or Darcy from in the office are there to like actually hold the phone, move the phone around if you like. Some of them are a bit more difficult if I'm on my, my own. Um, but yeah, they're generally minutes to do and, and create and add the, the effects on it are so easy to do and to, you, you can put a timer on it and, and I mean, cut. That, so. so Nick asked a question that he was thinking about using YouTube instead of TikTok and it was like, no, actually TikTok's the video creator and then yeah. you could upload that to YouTube if you wanted to, which will yeah. fold the videos, but YouTube isn't yeah. going to give you creati- creativity. No, it takes longer in my experience. If you're doing YouTube stuff, then you have to film it. And like, I have to use my eye, uh, MacBook even, and use my iMovies and cut and paste and timings. Whereas the to cut, it's so easy using the timer on TikTok to cut things and reshoot things. So um, like there's one I did where I'm changing T-shirts like to to music, or seven different T-shirts. One of them isn't a futurely one because I've still not had one, by the way. Well, you know what I mean? I have asked. I have asked. <laughs> we need to get in that office and get them sent through. That's uh, um, but um, but like that took yeah, like just seconds of of film cut, film cut, just just stop. So so yeah, that's easy. In terms of how long, in terms of content creation, thinking about it, I spend too many nights in bed sat with Heather and we both just sat on TikTok for an hour in bed like that's taken over like just chilling out or watching telly or reading the book like we can happily sit on TikTok for an hour, easy an hour and just I mean I'm doing it for my own enjoyment but there'll sometimes be we, we always say we're sifting for gold and there'll be one or two videos you think that's a cracking angle that I can do something with that or that music so yeah how long do I spend on TikTok probably at least five hours a week but it's a social pleasure not a not a work basis in that sense okay and how do you split your time in terms of obviously you know you don't have to go into what your fee earning um you know hours are and stuff but you know how much time are you taking out of your day to be creating this content guarantee you know understand it's it's business development essentially isn't it yeah it's kind of how how is that split not a lot i try i try where possible to do it first thing in the morning just smash it so it'd be back if you happen on max and that's normally um a TikTok, a TikTok filming or video, if that's going to be done, or a LinkedIn post, effectively. But sometimes, again, it's all about making notes as you're going along. So I remember when my gusto arrived and the ingredients were wrong, and it really annoyed me. And I thought, oh, there's something I can write about that in relation to accounting. So I just, while I'm cooking, almost writing a note out there. So it's it's prep. So some of it is done. It's weird. It's habit forming of doing it in everyday life. But if something happens, just make a note and, a, and a, even a concept for what the LinkedIn post or the TikTok will be. And then, because the hard part for me isn't the filming or the writing the stuff, it's mm. it's coming up with it in the first place. That's the bit that takes longer. So getting into the habit of just doing it as it happens. Um, I, I do find if you want to save time, particularly if there's more edits, it's much better to do content blocks. So admittedly in lockdown, we've got nothing to do at weekends. There have been times when I've been with Heather of like, right, let's, because uh, I say she does a dog walking. So we'll do splits of, right, let's do an hour of like coming up with daft stuff and doing some filming really. And that's, again, 
borderline hobby over over work and business development in that so so what you're saying is you need you all need a partner that's willing to um it helps. Still, still <laughs> that, basically. yeah it Which definitely is, helps yeah. and uh, <laughs> yeah def- definitely helps if you've got an understanding partner when you dress yeah like saying the pikachu ones is surrounded by board games and pop figures on the Saturday afternoon <laughs> Uh, yeah cool um we have had a few questions come through as you mentioned um thank you for obviously nick's raised a couple um does anybody have any questions um specifically for Stu at this point um is there any i think there's q a at the end isn't there if you're all right to hang on Stu, is that all right yeah you're right to hang on for us cool. ron, yeah. ron, yeah. ron the, the maestro i think is doing that isn't he cool okay Stu. well um uh, thank you That's very fascinating. much fascinating can yes. i just say utterly fascinating yeah, no worries so and we're I'm going to be tapping up my 13 year old to get me on TikTok tonight. So I've got I've got the app. I've just not registered. <laughs> I'm nearly there. You know, it's like they say with exercise, wear the shoes and the gear. And then next time go up to your door. And yeah, I'm working my way. In. I'm getting there. Um, so she really, really appreciate it. As you say, if you can hang around and um, we'll do some Q&A. At the end. Yeah. Um, and yeah, at this point, um, I was going to introduce a special guest. Um, no, it's all right. Sam can. Yeah, it's fine. Yes. Yeah, our, our CEO, um, Hannah. Um, is going to be joining and going through uh, a, an update of where we are with advisor um uh, but she's here she's, she's I'm in. here i'm here basically um stealing sam's gay thunder sam's not even putting his his camera on because he's so you know disgruntled with the fact that i've i've come in and bashed him out of the way um so look sam thank you sam and sam sam and stuart thank you sam you're uh, the advisor slot aren't you mr Skay? I'm um, indeed, yeah, but it's um, certainly a short little slot, a short little sneak peek, but yeah, I've invited uh, you along to kind of run through it and um, have a little look. So, um, yeah, so yeah. I think a lot of people have been like, right, we've got new products out. There's, you know, Predict has been a long time in the making. It's out. Um, we have obviously Flow's still there, but Advisor is our powerhouse product. Um, just for everybody's benefit, we still run Futurely on Advisor. Uh, so everything everything we do is in there with m- multiple linked scenarios, I'm sure you can uh, appreciate. Um, so I've had a look through the attendees list and I know that there's some, uh, some people in here like, oh, what are they doing? What are they doing with it? Well, I think I want to preface this by saying this, these updates are going to come in. <laughs> they're not all coming at once. Um, they're going to come in, in phases uh as as yet undetermined because it depends on the the size of the um piece of work um and uh but we you know just want to really cover off that we haven't forgotten about advisor but just like any business you have to prioritize resource with you know when whatever resource that you've got so uh i guess without further ado because i like shut up and show me um i'm going to show you uh some this prototype this is what's being worked in at the moment um like i say you're not going to get this on day one um oh mark caston thank you i love advisor too it is epic uh and i know i shouldn't say this of my own product but it is brilliant um so it's uh like i say you're going to see some structural changes <laughs> so just want to just so you don't go oh god what's happening some structural changes um so for instance the uh the uh, nav bar there's some some changes have happened there and the reason is is that we've got a suite of products now and so they all need to look and feel the same way so that's you know so that it it makes a lot more sense particularly from your perspective because i know we got a lot of questions like is predict here to replace advisor well no it's not um just you know very quickly on that we all i care about with our business is giving small businesses future um future focused software so that they can help navigate the choppy waters ahead which crikey if 2020 has taught us anything it's that and i think 2021 and beyond is going to be delightful as well um so but equally advisor is for your more complex businesses you know who need management reporting or non-financial information i see you patrick you're in there um non-financial reporting or um you know board packs well i i will hasten to guess that the majority of your of your clients the compliance clients which is the bulk of your revenue they, they don't have a board, you know, they're owner managed. They, you know, a lot of uh, what's traditional advisory and what advisor supports is just bigger. It's, it's for the bigger businesses who want to pay, who need that level of detail. 
predicts for the rest of them. So whatever, you know, the size of the business that you're dealing with, we will have something to support you in being able to facilitate, um, you know, uh, better conversations with them. Anyway, I'm going to stop prattling and I'm going to take you through it. Uh, so please put in the chat any comments. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to take anything personally. <laughs> I, I totally will take it personally if you <laughs> don't like anything. Um, but please, please do. All right. So I am sharing the screen now. And here we go. So can you see it? Everything okay, Sam? Thumbs up? Right. That's good. I'm just going to minimize everybody and move that out of the way. So the first thing that you'll see is like typically we have um, with and the current advisor setup, we've got navigation down the side. Um, you'll notice that this uh, will mi this mimics uh, what the, the user experience and the UI of um, Predict and Flow. Reason being that this tends to be the uh, the most um, the most uh, comfortable navigation um, style um, in UX research. But what we've done is things like adding users, the formula builder and the organizations that's going to live away. It's going to, you know, they are not things that you need to see on a daily basis. So we're really streamlining the, the process at the top. Um, because this is a, a tool for primarily you guys to use with your small businesses, um, we're just going to restructure how, how it, it appears. So at the moment you log in and you're sent to the dashboards. Um, that sometimes causes issue uh, because you know it's not it's not like a holding screen. So um, when we log in, your login just a little bit like you know zero would be, for instance, with uh, it's going to be you know your alerts, which is effectively your client list and and those things that you are keeping on top of. Um, but what you'll notice is that uh, the the user interface has had a big freshen up. Um, and just to streamline it, uh, I think when we went back into to really looking at the design and advisor, something that was very apparent is that we we kind of overwhelm. If we just look, use the dashboards as a, as our the, the example today, we overwhelm you with quite a lot of information and repeated information, such as. Um, your print and duplicate and so that each one of the cards has got four icons here uh, you've got lots of dashboard controls here you've then got the the icons on the left hand side and actually what you want to see when you log into something like this is the information right the information that's pertinent to the business not the controls of the software so um first thing probably um i'm i'm assuming will be the aesthetic so I, for those of you with, who like fonts, uh, our font is being updated. Um, so that that will uh, change. Snapshot cards are going to be, you know, rejigged just a little bit to make it actually flow so that the information that you're looking at re re references it itself. Um, tables, you know, all of these things are just getting updated to look much more 2021 rather than uh, you know the the current which we have, but I'm gonna just give you a, a quick tour of the dashboard controls. This is this is just sneak peek. We're not going to go into the full everything um, today, but you know, adding a KPI card, you know, these are where the controls are. You want a new dashboard, you want to present it, you want to copy it, you want to download it. Like even the language that we use currently, it's not intuitive enough. You want to edit the business. So for instance, you know, this is, we've got, got I think we call it bulk update organizations, not exactly friendly. Um, and again, viewing all of your dashboards, just making it really clear that you can, you know, you can send folders, you can send, you know, so there's lots of functionality that's actually missed when you, you know, because of, just because of, you know, user experience getting more sophisticated. Um, equally sharing and sending a copy, well, it's collaboration, right? And, and making those things streamlined, you know, it's uh, it's something to, to realize when you go in and see that, uh, we've got two different two different models for doing the same job effectively. Uh, so these sorts of things are going to be changed and just updated. It will be a stream of updates. Um, you will probably get uh, so a lot of these changes. What you will see just from the styling perspective, you'll see flowing all the way through um, to you know the other areas. 
so the report section is where your PDFs are, obviously forecasts. Now we're not going to touch much on forecasting. I know that um, I had a great session with Patrick Levy on uh, Friday for about an hour. And I know that there, there are things like non-financial information, pulling that in, he is a, you know, your power CFOing really, Patrick, to be fair. But, um, you know, there's, there are some things that from a usability perspective as well that we want to, to tweak and, and go forward. Um, there's gonna be, there will be a, a, a release uh, this today or tomorrow, which will, it's just a little one, um, which will allow in the PDF reports you to, to select multiple organizations if you want to, which of course um, that, you know, on the same page, which is, quite handy for those people who have multiple organizations. Um, but what I do want to say is that we hadn't, we haven't not done anything on advisor. So actually behind the scenes, uh, the syncing, how we pull in data, how we store your data, all of those things, OAuth 2 through with zero, which is um, a different credentials service updated for uh, this uh, this decade, um, we've done all of those updates. So Advisor had a significant team working on it actually for about nine months of last year, and then we've got a, more of a front end team working on it now to to go through really just tidying things up. You'll see that the 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 card controls will be pulled into a smaller area, and so on and so forth. So. Lots of um, little usability tweaks to make it much more intuitive, much more um, stylish. I hope you agree. And, um, and yeah, and that's that's the sneak peek today. So back to Sam, Ron, Dan, whoever's there, um, and if there's any questions. Looks like we've got a few coming through. I, I have to say that's that's uh, the most uh, I've seen of it as well. So I'm excited to see. Um, it's, <laughs> it's great to see. As I say, it follows on with the whole product suite, and it's just yeah, nice to see um, the fresh new look. Um, looks like we've got a few questions. Should we pick the advisor ones first? Um, Anonymous has asked, "Can we bulk update um, dates yet, please?" Um, on the board, do you mean so so that it's the full? So you're not having to do it card by card. I'm not sure. We'll wait for an answer. Yeah, on that we'll, one. Wait, we'll wait for a further answer. Um, so we've had another one about uh, integrating with Sage. We, we, do you know what? We did a lot of work on integrating with Sage 50 quite a while ago. Um, and uh, it's, it's something, I think integrations now with going forward, we will look to do them in a one hour for all products so that it's, you know, we've just got to be really efficient. Uh, so yes, absolutely. Because at the end of the day, we want to facilitate as many small businesses as possible. Um, so yes, it's of course on the list, but it has been for a while. However, we know that being able to get, you know, the kind of insights that the company can provide with the different products was more important um, from, from my perspective, frankly, and from our perspective. Um, okay. Uh, 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 uh. I think right. some of the question is the free agent one. Yeah, I guess yeah, the, the, way, the way I always look at it is it's an octopus, essentially. And then we're just attaching all our tentacles to the different integrations. Exactly. I mean, we, we, I think we'll get to a point where we're an integrations house. And that's not necessarily, you know, the, the big vision is that there would be non-financial, you know, integrations as well, because forecasting those things are very, you know, a lot, the majority of small businesses and all businesses are using, you know, non-financial drivers um, and, and where they're making the most decisions. Um, so will there be an ability to report more than two scenarios, something potentially that we could do? I mean, I, again, all of these things, we have a, we've, we've actually got a list of user requests, which Matt, who's our head of support, updates um, every day. And Matt and they, they, they update this all the time. And so it's really volume of requests will push things up the list. Um, so. So yes, can we up bulk update dates? That would be a board control. It's something that we're looking at. I think anything at the moment, all of the dashboards, you can have multiple organizations on a dashboard. It was, you know, and it was constructed as such. Um, for us to take out that um, ability to do, uh, to change, to do kind of global controls on the dashboard, it, it is quite complex. I know it sounds like it would be something that's easy, but it's not necessarily so. But anything that's time saving, that stops people being irritated, um, that those are the sorts of things that, from a user perspective, user experience perspective, we're looking to tidy up. One from Martin as well. 
Um, backwards compatibility with pre-existing dashboards reports. I'm not sure what that means. Does anybody, any, any ideas? Sam Dunn, does that mean anything to you? Not to me, unfortunately. Martin, could you elaborate on that? I know you've, you've kind of okay. given me some really good points, um, but backward compatibility, not one I know I'm we've, familiar with. And we've got another question as well from James. Um, assuming existing advisor reports will be unaffected. Um, oh, for sure. Exactly. For that question, of course. So it'll go through full testing in our staging environment against, you know, all of our exist anything that's existing. So you're not, and and we will also, we're not just going to flick the switch on you guys. Um, what we'll do is give you an opportunity to say, look, let me get early access, or actually don't, you know, for for a period of time. I mean, there will be a period of time when the whole thing will get turned on, but certainly, you know, if you want to keep the old version for a bit, you certainly can do. Um, oh, John looks like he's he's plugged uh, peer for us by the looks of things and right, asking yeah. if there is a user group. Um, Ron, do you want to talk to that? Is he there? We know you're there really, Ron. I'm here. Um, yes, there is a user group. Um, we have the regular um, peer group round table, um, of which happens every two weeks. There is one this afternoon. Um, so if anyone is interested in attending that, probably the best way to get hold of it is if you drop an email to accountmanagement at futurely.com. Um, I'll put that email address in the chat box um, and I can, um, yeah, I can send you the details. Good. Cool. Great. Um, I think... The flooding in now, we've got even more coming in through. Um, yeah, I was going to ask actually, Stu, what's your thoughts? Obviously, you're an advisor user. Um, what's your thoughts on the updates? Looks really cool. Looks really cool, and um, it'll take a little bit of getting used to of where things are. There's always that. There's always that change, isn't there? Like, oh, that's not where I know where it is. So there's a bit of time to invest in getting it right. But it looks a lot slicker and um, fairly intuitive to get used to. So I'd be certainly more than that. Was yeah, wanting to take the old one off and get the new one as soon as possible. <laughs> to be honest. Okay. So Mar <laughs> I think Martin's just asked, will pre-existing orgs doc scenarios be visible in the new platform? Of course, yes, without question. This is, you know, this is about improving usability, improving, you know, back in the day, we, we had very, very long certification. You don't need to do that anymore now. I mean, it's, it's but it's a big, it's a big product, right? And anything that we can do to make it super easy for you, your staff to on be onboarded without any assistance, frankly, is what it needs to be able to do. Um, but like I say, it's more, you know, we have to, just like you would advise your small businesses, uh, you know, we need to do the things that are gonna affect the most people first. And then of course, there's always, there are always things that oh, I just really want you to do X. And sometimes we can, and sometimes we can't. Um, but that, you know, and that's the that's the nature of software development, unfortunately. Um, so, so yeah, that's, that's where we're at, folks. There is a round table this afternoon. They're wheeling me out again. I'm going to get the same questions from the same people. This is what's going to happen. You will answer that question. You'll be able to see them this time. Though. They'll see I know, them exactly. Like, exactly. Your eyes, you stare see. them yeah. down. I know. Yeah. Thank you. Um, th there was a question earlier that um, Elliot has asked um, for Stu, um, uh, which was just a question around how many staff does Stuart have? Sorry, missed the start. So um, I don't think we covered how many staff you have, but how many are you working with you, I guess, on the on the social media stuff? Um, other than, well, other than Heather that's, that. that's off. Yeah, zero. <laughs> <laughs> so we have 30 staff in total. There's, oh, no, we want 35. There's four in Manchester, about 25 in London, and six in Brighton. But not what they're all, every single one of them is an accountant. We have zero admin staff, zero marketing staff, nothing. So um, it's something we are changing. <laughs> I am on the lookout for a marketing peep. So if anyone doesn't know someone out there that uh, wants to come along for the ride, uh, that would be great. But at the moment, yeah, it's everything's just done uh, internally. We have a, we have an external blog writer that assists with some of those sometimes and, and getting them to, to press, et cetera, for better reach and SEO and that kind of stuff. But in terms of a, actual marketing concept stuff we don't have anyone cool um i i think um that is it there's probably going to be ones firing through but if there is any that we've missed we can pick them up individually can i um, have one thing that i just remembered on the possibly. on the social media front uh, particularly if you're empowering staff like i would encourage staff to do it and obviously yeah as long as you're not going crazy but the crazy you know I, I generally stay away from kind of like politics religion the usual kind of stuff in terms of some of the the posts there that that can anger people but You've got to empower your staff or even have a go at yourself first. Like, be prepared to make a mistake and get things wrong. Like, I can honestly say, I'm, you know, I'm posting almost every day 360 posts. 
there'll be a few that are slightly off center and didn't quite work the way I wanted them to, or don't get the engagement, or just make you look a bit daft. But it's all right. Like it's, it's nobody doesn't make mistakes, and if you don't make mistakes, you don't learn. So that's that's the other thing. And were you open to people asking you questions or even sending you a video and say, "What do you think?" I'll probably put you on pressure there and put uh, <laughs> more on your work. No, yeah. but... no, people are happy. I'm always happy to help the the industry and people get started and, and move on. So yeah. Um, I don't mind sharing my insights and thoughts if anyone wants them. Uh, so you bet that is LinkedIn message. Yeah. I'm getting a thought. Cool. Um, I think just we're about pretty much on time. Um, unless anybody else has anything they want to add or any burning desires, I want to just say thank you for everyone uh, for joining. Stu, obviously, as our MVP, as your MVP for joining. Um, you know, Dan, Sam, um, Ron for organising this and obviously getting Hannah on as well as a special guest. We are going to be running these once a month. Um, if there's any things that you would like to see or know more of, let us know, you know, because we're going to create content and, and have things to talk about. But we want to make sure that it lands and resonates. Um, so we will have a, a guest joining us again next month. Um, what that will be, we don't know. Uh, but as I say, you know, please do. Uh, help us because you know we want to make these uh, a valuable uh, use of your time and also get the team out there you know get you to understand who well, we and are if, and, and if anybody wants to participate if you want to be on it let us know yes. right and particularly yeah. if you're really good at contemporary dance because i think that that's just going to help everybody so we can have some live demonstrations you know dan and sam and sam will put something together ron will film it it'll be great yeah we can do a michael flatley or something do the river yeah, dance in the background or something yeah. wonderful Exactly. Yeah, call me twinkle toes <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you again everybody um have a lovely day and we will send the recording as well thanks very much cheers awesome. all bye-bye thank you